What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to pick up things in first person and equip it into your hands. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is create the pickable item. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is just right click in the content browser, create a new blueprint class, and let's create an actor because it will just be out there in the world. Let's call this something as BP underscore, you know, item. And then you can, you know, make chows and change the parameters and everything like that. So this item will basically just have a static mesh, which will be the model itself. Now in my case, I don't really have a model. So I'm just going to have, for example, I don't know uh, what we can have like this, uh, this tattoo, this table, you know, it's just a, let's put this tattoo, right? It's a um, placeholder. Okay. If you have a sword or whatever you actually want to pick up, you would put it here um, and that's it. And then what we need to do is create a collision, sphere collision, and this will be the trigger. Now, what we're going to do is just make this radius way bigger. And if the player enters in this radius, we can interact with it. So make sure down in the collision settings for trigger that the preset is set as overlap all dynamic. That way we can enter and you know we will detect this item. All right, so now with that said, what we're going to do is create an interface so we can interact with this item without directly needing to reference the class, which is better. So let's just right click, go to the blueprint section and create a blueprint interface. Let's call this something as BPIS, blueprint interface, underscore interact, and let's open this up. So this will create a new function, which we will just name interact. And that's it. We can now compile, save and close. But I'm going to add a new thing which is going to be an output and this output will be a static mesh because basically we'll receive what mesh we want to equip. So let's just go ahead and put the type as static mesh. Okay. And we go static mesh object reference. That way, when we interact with an item, we will basically get and receive what mesh we want to equip, right? So now we can go to the BP item, go to class settings and in implement interfaces, just add BPI interact and there we go. It is here. So if I double click, you can see that it will open this function. And the only thing I need to do is go here and make a you know print string, for example, and be like um, picked up. Right. And then just get the static mesh and then say get uh, static mesh itself and then just plug it into the output. That way, when we pick it up, we will receive the static mesh. So now we just need to integrate everything to the player. In my case, I'm using the first person template. So let's go to the first person blueprint and open up the first person character. But of course, you would open whatever, uh, you know, blueprint character you're using. And now what I'm going to do is go here and right click and add an E key. If you want, you can add a proper input like in here with an enhanced input system. But I have many tutorials on that too. And now what I want to do is do a for each loop and why? Well, that's because we can, you know, get the overlapping actors of this player. And as you may remember, we added this trigger, which if our player enters, he will be overlapping. So we will detect this item as we are overlapping. And then we can just check with this node, which is called the DOS implement interface. If it has this interact interface and with a branch, if it does, we are simply going to go ahead and call the interact interface that we create, which is here. And as you can see, we can just call from any object, the interact function, and we don't need to cast to, you know, BP underscore item, right? And then from here, call interact. Now we can just directly do it universally for any object on here. So that's cool. And now with that said, you can see we will receive the static mesh. But first of all, let's go ahead and just uh, drag this, um, you know, item to the floor. As you can see, you can go here and when I press E, you can see the uh, print messages appearing at the top left of the screen, right? Picked up, picked up and so on. Now, let's quickly just go to the event graph, right click, create a new custom event. And let's call this something as destroy item. And basically what we want to do is just destroy it, right? Remove it from the game once we have picked it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a small delay and I will tell you why we're doing a small delay for two seconds and then just destroy actor self. So it will destroy the item itself once we pick it up. And why do we create a new custom event and add a delay? 
Well, that's because in the interact function, we cannot add a delay, okay? We can't. In functions, we can't. And if we were to put the destroy actor before, it would never, you know, get to this point where we want to, you know, go ahead and send the static mesh. So we will have an error. So instead, we need to call the destroy item, um, you know, event that we created, which will have a small delay and it will let this go through. All right. And now when I pick it up, you can see that it basically disappears, which is cool. And I cannot pick it once uh, more again. And then back in the first person character, the only thing I need to do is go to my first person arms, right? Just add a static mesh, which will be the item. And then just anchor this on the parent socket, which will be, for example, the right hand, right? You can decide on that. And then we would just need to go to item set static mesh and what mesh it would be. It will simply be this static mesh. And right now, if I press play, go here and pick it up. You can see that now we have it in my hand. Of course, it's kind of just there um, moving around very, <laughs> not very nicely. That's because, you know, I just quickly added to one socket. But another thing that we can do is just add it, for example, the, to the first person camera instead. Right. And we would just have it in front of the camera a big to the left right it's down here and you can kind of play around and i think we'll have it basically there right so we can just change a bit the positioning right play around and that's a bit better but uh <laughs> maybe it's still too close right but i think like that should be pretty cool there we go and we kind of pick it up and there we go and you can, of course, do this with any item and expand it as you want. So that's it, guys. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of unreal and different videos hand to throw, so check them out. Check out my uh, Patreon to the members so you can get access to the project files. Join my Discord server to talk with me and to other devs. Check out my new course with Game Dev TV, how to make a stealth game in Unreal. Follow me on my socials. And now, yes, until I said, bye bye.